The name of this lesson is called Reading Analog and Digital Clocks. It's supposed to take at least 30 minutes, and this is for third graders. Um, in this lesson, students will practice reading analog and digital clocks. This lesson is also sets the stage for a fun bingo game that can be played throughout the year, and students will read and write time on digital and analog clocks to the nearest five minutes. Um, advanced preparation by teachers include having a clock time. Um, you prepare these ahead of time by filling in the times that you want the students to identify. So I already have a list of about 16 um, hour, you know, different times. I also have a time game card, and it looks like this. They're blank analog and digital clocks. Have bingo chips ready for the students to play with these time cards. Have scissors and glue. And also prepare a whiteboard or a large paper with the teach chart that has two different columns, one for analog and one for digital, and it kind of looks like this. <clears throat> Remind the students that when we count by fives, we start at zero and count up by five. So, and then um, in order to help them have, them, have them stand up in a circle, model counting by fives up to 60 and pair each number with the movement. For example, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Um, on a whiteboard or on a paper, on a document projector, draw a clock that's large enough for a student to stand in the middle. And I don't have enough space, so I just did one on paper. Um, remind, add, add the numbers around the clock and write analog on top of the clock. Remind students that clocks have a short hour hand and a longer minute hand. Um, when the clock hand goes around the clock, there are five minutes in between each number on the clock. So, for example, this is the number two and this is the number three. Let's count how many spaces in between. That's one, two, three, four, five. Equivalent to five minutes. Uh, model a few times explaining how we use the hour and the minute hand. Now, tell students that there are two ways to show time. There is the analog clock, which we just been practicing, and then there's also a digital clock. The digital clock uses only numbers to show time. Uh, show students examples of different digital clocks, and then post the T chart that we have with digital and analog. Uh, pull out a time card. Now these time cards, you're going to have them already. And here's a couple examples of some time cards. These are digital, oops, digital clocks. And these are analog clock times. I don't know if you can see that. All right. And so what you're going to do is you're going to post a T-chart with the digital and analog clocks on it. And you're going to pull a time card. So I just pulled out a card. And I have an analog. So I'm going to post it on the analog side. And then you just keep going. Second one that I pulled out is a digital clock. So I'm going to post it up underneath the digital side of the T chart. Um, <clears throat> as you post them for each option, write how an analog or a digital clock would record the same time. So for example, this analog time that we pulled out says six o'clock. All we have to do is grab our pin and on this side, make a digital clock. And you're also going to put that time in that digital clock. So we have the six o'clock analog and a six o'clock digital clock. All right, so ensure that the students identify the analog and the digital clocks tell us that the same information. Now, tell the students that they will be working on their own teach chart, so make sure that you make enough copies of these. They'll be posted also. And um, give pass them out to the children and let them start working on their own. Uh, have students work independently or in pairs to select and sort times on their own teach chart. Then, um, then you're going to create your bingo time cards. Now, this is where your list of time comes in. You're going to pass out blank time cards, just like these. 
and you're going to read out 16 different times and you're going to have the students record whether at um record the times whether they want to choose the analog clocks or if they want to choose the digital clocks um students can put each time wherever they want to they don't have to go in order to create their own time cards and you could save these cards for a later use once the students have their time cards play a few rounds of time as a whole group this activity can become a center activity after students have mastered it and during the game circulate and take note of which students are able to read the times independently and easily and which require assistance and then as students become familiar with the game they can lead their the time game as well now, as far as the assessment, once students have mastered the skill, they will have a homework assignment to do either at home or at school. Um, students will have to create a video of them describing the difference between an analog clock and a digital clock and then upload it onto the classroom blog on the Edmodo website. The teacher will already have a place where the students can upload the videos and watch their peers' videos definition of analog and digital clocks. Students will have to comment on two peers' posts with an appropriate text regarding the video in order to receive full credit. Alright guys, that was the lesson plan for reading analog and digital clocks. Thank you.